Both of these telescopes have a focal length of about one and a half meters. To put this into perspective, my slide rule here is configured to be about one and a half meters long. That means that given the same eyepiece, they'll both produce the same magnification. Tonight we'll have a comparison to see what a planet looks like in each of these, and which one is better. The first telescope that we'll be using is a Maxitov Cassegrain made by Orion. It has a diameter of 127 millimeters and on the back is an Orion image corrected diagonal. Next up is Newtonian on a Dobsonian mount. This 12 inch reflector is made by Jumel. Both of these telescopes were purchased used and the Dobsonian's mirror has been recoded. To compare apples to apples, we'll be using a Teleview 8mm Plossel. Given that the formula for magnification is just the telescope focal length divided by the eyepiece focal length, we can see that if you take the number 1,500mm and you divide by 8mm, we get 187.5. So the magnification is just shy of 188. This should be plenty of magnification for seeing Saturn. Okay, here we have the Maxitov Cassegrain. It's pointed at Saturn. I have an 8mm uh, colossal in there, and there's a Orion diagonal. It's a pretty good view of Saturn. It's relatively sharp. It's not super bright. That might just be because of the capture area, and I'm here in the city, so uh, there's a lot of light pollution. But it's pretty neat. Uh, the rings are relatively sharp. I can't quite make out the Cassini division. Um, I, I think I might be able to see it. Yeah, I can just, just barely see the Cassini division, but Saturn looks pretty sharp in this. It's nice. Okay, now we have the 12-inch Dobsonian. It's pointed at Saturn. I have an 8mm plus in here. Let's see how it looks. rings are really sharp. I can see the Cassini division really well. The atmosphere must be really stable because this is basically the best I've ever seen Saturn. Okay, so let's summarize our one and a half meter focal length shootout. We used the same eight millimeter plossal eyepiece to make sure that they both had the exact same magnification of about uh, 187, roughly, 187, 188. So that was to make sure that everything, we had apples to apples comparisons. So let's start out with this guy. This is the Orion uh, Maxitov cast green, uh, 127 millimeters in diameter on this guy. And uh, let's talk about the pros on this. The first obvious pro to this is that it's so portable. You can pick it up, carry it around. You can do a football carry. This thing is super portable. You can put this in the backseat of your car, you can put it in the trunk, you can put it anywhere. That's a really good thing, especially when we talk about the Dobsonian. The images that this produced were pretty good. Now, they weren't as bright. The contrast wasn't there that I'm used to. Uh, I've used Dobsonians for about 20 plus years, so I'm used to super bright uh, images. But uh, the image that this produced of Saturn was pretty darn good. I could see the rings, I could just almost see the Cassini division in the ring, almost. Uh, but it was it was it gave a, a very satisfactory view of Saturn. I would imagine uh, if you went somewhere where you didn't have as much light pollution as you have here in town, you would probably get a, uh, an even better image of Saturn with this. So let's talk about the other telescope, the Dobsonian, the 12-inch Dobsonian. The main downside for the Dobsonian is the sheer size. Uh, I have a confession to make, and that is, of the few times I've gone camping and brought a telescope along, I've never been able to bring the 12-inch Dobsonian because it won't fit in our vehicle. Unless I want to sleep inside the tube itself, we can't fit it in the car with the camping gear. So it's either sleeping bags or giant telescope. Instead, I take the 8-inch Dobsonian, which fits very nicely in the vehicles. Uh, let's see. The Dobsonian, since it's a big light bucket, it gathers so much light. It produces very bright images and it produces very sharp images. You know, tonight I, I saw the atmosphere was 
just perfect. And I saw the best image of Saturn I've ever seen. I could see the, the Cassini division very clear in the Dobsonia. I could almost see it in this one. So, you know, to give it credit where credit's due. But again, uh, the, as far as the quality of image and brightness goes, the Dobsonian one. Now, I know it's um, it has a bit of an advantage. It's gathering a lot more light, so that's it's not exactly the fairest. But I will say that the portability of the Dobsonian is a pretty huge factor. It weighs a lot. I would say 70, 80 pounds total. And so when it comes down to it, both of the telescopes produced acceptable images. You know, I was very happy with both of them. I would say if you could find a really good uh, mount for this, I had it on a tripod that was being very finicky. Um, so that was a little bit, a little bit irritating actually, the mount that I had this on. Uh, if you were to put this on a good solid uh, equatorial mount, I think it would make a huge difference. Uh, I'm used to the ease of the Dobsonian. The Dobsonian, it's the point and click telescope, right? You just, you just grab the front end, then you move it wherever you want it to go and it stays. It's really nice. So again, uh, I am biased towards Dobsonians, but I will say, if if you're at a if you need a telescope that doesn't take up a lot of space and is very portable, then this is the one you have to go for. If you have a big vehicle and it doesn't matter how big the telescope is, then I would say go ahead and get a big Dobsonian. But either way, if you see either of these um, and you get a really good deal on them, I would say pick them up. I think you'll be happy with either one, to be honest. So. Please like and subscribe and clear skies everybody.